cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and I think I've got a pretty fun little project for you guys today. It involves taking some very specific components and sticking them together in a way that only really makes sense with 3D printing or other DIY methods. My friends at GearBest asked me to come up with a project that involves this Mi tablet as well as this Mi Bluetooth speaker. A speaker and a tablet, well, I figured why not make a cool little portable DJ station of sorts. I've also got this giant Anchor portable battery, so I thought why not throw that in as well. So what I'm trying to do today is figure out a way to stick these all together in an easy to carry, easy to use way that lets you basically have portable awesome music on the go with a long lasting battery. That's why I'm saying this is an ideal 3D printing project. Sticking together different products from different brands and having them be a single cohesive unit, it's not exactly something that would make sense for a big brand or a big company to do. But with a bit of time spent designing in Fusion 360 and then some 3D printing, we can actually do that. We can make this unit, this product that's actually gonna be very useful to me. It's just not useful for a big company to sell. It's one of those reasons that I think 3D printing is so cool. Before we get any further, I just want to throw this out there. GearBest didn't ask me to actually review these items. They just wanted me to use them in the video. But uh, this is my first tablet and it's kind of awesome. These products are made by a Chinese company called Xiaomi. They're huge in China. And basically this thing is like an iPad ripoff, but it runs Android, which is kind of awesome for me. And I've been using it for several weeks and I love this thing. The speaker is also very Apple looking, but it sounds great. I've been able to have it running all night. It plays music really loud. This Anchor battery is super cool too. If you need to go on a big camping trip, you can be gone for five days and never lose a charge on your phone. These are definitely all solid products and that's why I'm so excited to stick them together and make something super cool. So let's get right to it. So we have a tablet, a speaker, and an external battery. The question is, what's the best way to put it all together? So when designing this, we have to consider a few things. We don't want to obstruct the buttons here on the top of the speaker. The speaker should be facing forward so the sound is projected. We've also got power and volume buttons on the tablet, as well as the charging port. And then there's some speakers back here, but we're probably not going to be using those. Still might be worth considering. So maybe we want the tablet here above the speaker and kind of at an angle. That way, if it's sitting on a table, it can easily be controlled while you're standing up. And maybe we'll place the battery in the back here, since this thing is like a brick. So we can take advantage of that weight and use that to make the design stable. So here I'm doing kind of an invisible mock-up, just planning how the cables could be connected and everything being very easy to access and the design being compact and stable. So that looks good. I'll use my calipers to measure most of the dimensions and I'll just use a ruler where my calipers aren't long enough. By precisely measuring all these different parts, I can easily recreate them in Fusion 360, and it's really gonna help me to design around those to build my station. So I can actually use the move copy command here and place everything the way I want it to be. Now we wanna make sure that the bottom of this battery is lined up with the bottom of the speaker. So the way I'll do that is by creating a sketch here and creating a line that is tangent to the lowest point of the battery. So I can set the constraints here to be a horizontal line and also to be tangent with that part. Next, I'll do another line from the bottom of the speaker, and I'll bring that point right below the other point. Then I can use the move copy command again, and use the point to point move type to make that tiny movement and make sure that everything is perfectly lined up the way I want it to be. There we go. So that's basically how I want my parts to be oriented, and now I can just build my whole case around that. I'm really gonna speed through this part because I was basically just improvising everything and not really considering how this would be 3D printed. I was taking the approach of kind of just build the case and then deconstructing it and figuring out a way to make it easily printable. But as I went on, everything just got really bulky and the design was just weird. It just didn't look good. So I decided to just scrap that and start fresh. This time around, I decided to take a much more minimal approach. I'll start by creating an offset plane from this right plane, and I'll bring it out a ways, just an arbitrary amount for now, because with Fusion 360 I can always go back and move this plane. With that plane selected, I'm going to do a section analysis, 
which will do this cross section at that plane. Then I can create a sketch on the same plane. I'll use the project command to basically take all these cross sections and turn them into lines that I can reference with my sketch. So with all those outlines projected, I'll now run through and use my line tool to basically just create a side profile of what my case is gonna look like. The idea I came up with here was just to create this two-dimensional profile and extrude that into a very simple skeleton that should just hold the parts together. I'll have two of these extruded profiles on either side of my set and hopefully that'll create a stable music station. So I'm kind of speeding through this again, but really I'm just creating this sketch and then I'm setting a bunch of constraints. That way the lines line up with the product. And then I'll also set dimensions to make all these walls the same width of three millimeters. And I'm gonna use a 0.2 millimeter tolerance between the products themselves and the print that I'm making. If this is confusing, don't worry. It'll become clear as we move along. Okay, so I've got my sketch, and the next thing I'm gonna do is turn off my section analysis here, and I'm doing an extrude with that sketch. I'm gonna make it a new body, and then I'll give it a distance of minus 20 to start out with, but I ended up adjusting that, making it minus 15, and later I'm actually gonna make it minus 10, just to avoid all the buttons that I have to avoid. I was thinking the connection between the speaker and the tablet might be a little flimsy, so I'm gonna go back in and add another strut here. So I'll go back, edit that sketch, and then I can just use the extend sketch tool to extend that line all the way down to the speaker. I'll trim away any excess lines, and then just like that, the model's updated, and yeah, that looks stronger. Um, these lines aren't quite parallel, so I'm gonna go back in and make some adjustments there, and it's really starting to come together. I think it could still use an extra support here along the bottom. So just as before, I can go back into that sketch and then just easily add one more line. I love how quick and easy it is to make edits on the fly. It's part of the reason I do a lot of my designing within Fusion 360, rather than thinking about it too much beforehand. All right, looks like we've got a good structure, so now I'm just gonna use that mirror tool and mirror this whole body along the right plane. And that'll create this nice symmetrical stand using the two separate parts. This looks really good already, but I did realize that there might be some overlapping with the buttons on top of the tablet. So I went back to that plane offset feature and I adjusted that to become a bit more narrow. So I think that'll be a bit better. All right, now we're not quite done because I wanna create a handle on the back here to carry this thing around and also to connect the two struts together. So once again, I'm going back into this same sketch and I'm gonna sketch out some 1.5 millimeter notches behind the tablet. Then I'm gonna zoom in here and start a sketch on this face. That way I can draw my handle part perpendicular to the slant of the tablet. I'll also switch the visual style to show hidden edges. That way I can reference them when creating this handle. Basically what I'm gonna do here is create a rectangle, give that some dimension and fill in the edges. And I'll offset that three millimeters to match the thickness of all the other parts. Then I'm gonna zoom in here and create an opposing notch to fit the two parts together. I'll just give it a 0.15 millimeter tolerance all around for a pretty tight fit. And when that looks good, I'm gonna extrude that as well. Now sometimes Fusion might be weird with the selections, like here it's trying to select this whole box with the extrusion. But to fix that, I hit control and then it let me select that smaller box. I'll extrude that 10 millimeters to match the rest of the parts. And I wanna make sure that it's creating a new body. That way it doesn't merge these together since I'm gonna be printing them separately. So that looks good. And I'll print two of these handles so that there's one uh, lower down there as well. But that's pretty much the entire framework. So now it's time for the Fillet Friday fun. If you guys have been following enough of my projects, you know I love those fillets. It's really a great way to finish off your design, finalize everything off and make it look nice and smooth. So I went ahead and sent that to print on my Lulzbot Taz 6 using this light blue PLA from Matter Hackers. Now before I print the entire set, I'm gonna take this one part and test the fit of all my different components just to make sure it's nice and snug everywhere that it needs to be. And sure enough, it looks like my measurements were correct. Everything fits really well. I did make these handles a little more narrow to avoid those buttons on top of the tablet. But once I did that, I'm ready to assemble my station. Now with these handles, I was thinking they might just snap together which they kind of did, but not really that well. 
And I also was thinking that the tablet might hold the handles in place themselves. But the handles are still floppy and you don't want them falling off every time you take out the tablet. So I just busted out my 3 doodler create and used the same exact filament to weld the parts together at all the different seams. That turned this into one single sturdy part, which looks pretty unique if you ask me. All the parts slide together just great, and the handle works like a charm. I also tested out my charging cables, and everything is accessible, although it might be better to have some shorter charging cables, but it still works really well. The print did rattle with the speaker just a little bit when I was carrying it, but when I set it down on the table, the sound is just perfect. Alright guys, I hope you agree that this is a pretty sweet little set that I put together. The first design I was creating wasn't looking too good, so I'm really happy that I went ahead and restarted, created this very nice lightweight, simple, yet pretty attractive uh, setup. It really is like the bare minimum use of material to hold all this together in a very nice way. And there's even room back there to hold on to my phone. <laughs> I hope this helped you guys see the value in 3D printing for creating extremely customized objects like this. And hopefully uh, I showed you enough that if you practice in Fusion 360 a bit, you can build your own DJ stations using whichever tablet, whichever speaker, whichever battery but still using the general same idea. And that's kind of what's so great about 3D printing and learning to design things on your own. If you do happen to have all these objects, or if you wanna buy them, check out the description. There's a link to all these items, as well as a link to my mini factory where I'll have this uh, 3D printing file up for you guys to have as well. All right guys, well that's it for this video. I'm gonna go around town, bump some jams. No, not really. But I am looking forward to the next party where I get to bust this thing out. I think it's sure to impress and sure to get some people dancing. So that's it for now. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. <laughs>